Good morning, y'all. I just wanted to go through because today I'm going to make a keto bread. Um, it's the keto bread that a lot of people find is too eggy. Everybody says it's too eggy. Um, I don't know what you think keto bread is going to taste like, especially when you're supposed to add six eggs to it. Um, it's going to have a different texture. It's definitely going to be heavier. It's not going to rise like a tr traditional bread. It's got no yeast in it or anything. So it's going to be a flatter, kind of heavier bread. So um, I make it for my husband because he eats that every morning, sort of like a toast. Um, he eats a really bizarre conglomeration of things for breakfast. Um, actually, one day... A long time ago, I was trying to find a way to get some omegas in. So I said, you know, let me look up what's got omegas. And I looked up and it said sardines or mackerel or a fish like that. So I was like, oh, okay. So I'd never had those really before. So I was like, I'll go buy some and we'll try them out. So I went to the store and I bought skinless, boneless sardines and skinless, boneless mackerel. And I had my little salad and I whipped these out and they're in, um, these are in water. You can buy them in olive oil as well. These are in olive oil. And so I took them out and they just look like little pieces of fish, you know, and I put them on my salad and uh, get ready to eat and dig in and oh my God, no. The answer is no. I can't. No. Just something about them. I can't do it. So I had a bunch of boxes of them because I bought more than one box. And he was like, when he started keto, he was like, hey, what are these? Uh, I'll try them. So he eats us in the morning on a piece of keto, keto bread with avocado and a hard boiled egg. That's his breakfast. And don't ask me how he does it. It's... But you know what? He's doing his keto thing. That's just fine. So I don't eat uh, the keto bread too much. Um, I don't know. I just, I find that it's not eggy. It's too heavy for me. I think it's too greasy, maybe. Because I like my bread a little drier. That's why I do the English muffin. So, for this recipe, you're going to need uh, a cup and a half of almond flour. That's what I use. I buy just Bob's Red Mill. And yeah, it's expensive. Um, I probably make one of these breads weekly, maybe. Uh, I usually make two because when my son's doing keto, he doesn't cook. He doesn't bake bread, so I make him a bread, an extra one, and then when he comes over, he just takes it home with him. He usually freezes it because he uses it slower than my husband does. And because it's dense and wet, it'll, pr it'll probably get moldy quicker than a regular bread because it doesn't have any, you know, anything to um, preserve it. So, but you need a, a cup and a half of the almond flour. This recipe calls for six eggs. I don't use six eggs. I used five in the beginning, and five for me worked fine. Uh, also, another thing about the whole egginess thing, we found that once you set it, like I wrap it in wax paper, and I put it in the Tupperware, and I put it in the fridge. So it sits there. It does, he noticed that the flavor changes as it sits. So, as it sits in the fridge, it loses some of that, I guess you'd call it an eggy flavor. So, I'm just breaking my eggs into a bowl. I'm throwing my eggshells in the sink, which he hates that. So, um, the five eggs I just put in whole. There are some recipes where they split the eggs and mix the yolks in first and then beat the whites to peaks uh, to give it more fullness. I tried that a couple times. It 
it didn't work for me. You have to cut in the whites once you're done mixing um, the bulk of it. You cut the whites in. It just, it was always flat for me. Even with the whites cut in, it didn't work. So I said, what the hell? I'm not going to bother doing all that extra work if, uh, if it's just going to turn out the same way. I like something I can just get in there and, and mix it and be done. So I have a loaf pan and I buttered it already. I just took a big glob of butter and buttered it all up because this bitch is hard to get out once it's cooked. So you want to make sure you butter this down, grease it up like a hog because uh, getting it out can be a real pain in the ass. Um, the other thing we use, so I put my five eggs in. Uh, you're going to need four tablespoons of butter, whatever kind of butter you use. And don't heat, if you're going to heat it up to get it soft so you can mix it, don't get it too hot. Just get it so it's just soft. Because if you put hot butter in with raw eggs, you're going to end up with cooked eggs in your bread. And people do this all the time. Oh, the bread turned out like shit. Well, I don't understand. I did everything like you said. No, you didn't. You put hot butter in with raw eggs. You can't do that. Okay? Now, if you overheat the butter, then you're going to have to wait till it cools down to mix it in with the eggs. Either that or you can temper, but tempering is difficult and it doesn't always work. So, your best bet is just don't overheat the butter. Okay? We're going to use uh, baking powder, this aluminum free. Um, I never knew they put aluminum in baking powder. You're going to use um, three teaspoons of this. Cream of tartar if you have it. Uh, it's just a binding kind of dealy. You don't, it's not, it, the bread's not going to really be that much different if you don't use it. Uh, I use a quarter teaspoon of this and then some salt. Just whatever you can pinch between two fingers and toss it in there. If you want it saltier, add more. So, uh, I forgot my cups. So, I'm going to have uh, a, a teaspoon and a tablespoon and a quarter teaspoon is what we're going to need. So I'm just going to pour, I'm going to move the bowl closer to y'all. Eh, it's cutting my head off. Put it right here. So I'm going to put a cup. And this morning when I was making my English muffin, you know, the other day when I um, did the muffin with the chili, I forgot to put the water in. This morning I made sure. I was like, water? <laughs> Didn't want to forget that again. So there's a cup. And a half. Of course, I just got it all wet. And I mean, I don't pack it down. I just, you know, cut it in half. It doesn't have to be to military standards, which would be low anyway. All right. And we're done with our almond flour. Just going to get that out of the way. We've got our almond flour in. Our next ingredient was the eggs. Our next ingredient is the butter, four tablespoons. And like I said, don't overheat it. So I like to do measurements instead of, um, I like to do grams instead of tablespoons. Um, one tablespoon is 14 grams. So that's going to be 4 times 14, which is, Jesus, 56, I think. <laughs> and I don't want to put it right on my scale, because that will make my scale messy. So I'll probably just use, this is a rubber measuring cup. I'm just going to put it on my scale and zero it out. And what did I say? 4, 8, 4, 8, 12, 16, 6, 4, so 56. So, uh, we'll just put a blob and see what it weighs. 23. Thirty, 39. 
53. Oh, look at that. I think we're going to get 56 on the nose, y'all. All right. I'm going to put this in the mic. Now, that is quite a bit of butter. But I am going to do it 20 seconds at a time. Because I don't want it to get hot. Okay? So that's going to cook. The next thing we're doing is after the butter was our baking powder. I like to put baking powder in last because it activates. So I'm going to put the cream of tartar in first, which is a quarter teaspoon, which I have right here. Quarter teaspoon of this. And again, I'm just kind of eyeballing. Goes in there. Our butter's done. Let's have a look. See, it got melted on the bottom, and the bottom is a little warm. So, what I like to do, I don't think I'm going to heat it up anymore. It's still a little tough. If I was smart, I would have taken it out prior to starting the video so that it was already soft, but these are real life situations, y'all. So, oh, I'm going to tilt you up a little. So I think this will be fine. It's soft enough, and by the time I get around to mixing it, um, it'll be fine. There might be a couple little lumps, but you would rather have a few little lumps of butter than a bunch of cooked uh, eggs. Because that, it just, it's never good when it does that. Okay. So I added the tartar. Let's put that away so I don't reuse it. And then um, the salt. We'll just do a pinch of salt. And I'm going to give you guys, I have macros for this that I did when I first started doing um, this bread that um, don't change because my product never changes. So that's for my bread. Y'all are going to want to do macros that I've taught you how to do uh, using your almond flour, which gives you the macros on that bag, and you figure out what a cup and a half is. The same with eggs, the same with the butter, all of it. So y'all can do that. I know you can. So baking powder is three teaspoons. We have our teaspoon here. It seems like a lot, but... Just think of what you're trying to push up here. You're not using yeast, so one, two, and baking powder is not going to hurt you, even if you did have a little too much in there. All right. So we got all our stuff in there. We got our butter to the side. All we need now is our mixer, which, damn it, I think. The beaters are cooking up. They're dirty. The beaters are dirty. I'm going to them off. Don't you know, I used them this morning. Alright, I'm going to get my beater and mix this up. It'll just be fun. Lots of noise. Always lots of noise. Again, another beautiful day here in the Richmond, the Richmond area. 77 degrees today. The sun's out. My dog's out again. We are hanging for the day. After I do this, I'll be looking for a job again. Just seems like an endless thing for me, looking for a job. You know, you would think with all the experience I have, somebody would want me. But... And just keep hitting dead ends. I don't know. Sign from the universe, maybe. Who knows? I'm not going to sweat it, though. You know? I could fret about it all day long. And freak out and lose my mind. Oh, my God. I don't have a job. I can't, nobody's hiring me. And I did that for a while, and it was giving me an ulcer. And, uh... So I quit doing it, and I apply for jobs every day, just looking for something where I can help people and be of service and, you know, do some good stuff in the world. Mm. 
Not my time yet. Not my time. So, y'all get me during the day. Isn't that exciting? All right, there's our butter in, and it's not hot. It's just melted. So, big noise. We're going to make some noise. We're going to beat all this up. And you don't want to overbeat it. start we're gonna preheat our oven and um, I already emptied the oven I've got the rack kind of in the middle ish I turned the oven light on so it's gonna take about I don't know 10 minutes or so to heat up and uh, someday I'm gonna learn how to edit so that I can just continue filming but I don't have to show y'all everything this is already looking so good it's got a great consistency, and um, I'm just going to get it all in there. You don't want it to be too sticky. If it's sticky or smells funny, like one time I, when I was first making these, it had a funky smell to it. I cooked it, and the bottom of it turned purple. I was like, what in the hell is that? Nobody could tell me. I ended up wasting about $10 worth of ingredients. Threw it away because it was inedible. You couldn't eat it. So, um, yeah, a lot of it is trial and error, which is why, you know, I, I never watched anybody's video on how to make bread. I just thought I was too smart for that. And it's bread for Christ's sake. What, what, how can you screw bread up? You know, I mean, I've got some basic cooking skill. I've been cooking for, you know, a few years. And I've made bread before. It's You don't have to be friggin' Albert Einstein to make bread. So I thought, no, nah, that's easy. Just throw all the ingredients and away you go. Yeah. Sometimes it's better because especially specialty items. Specialty items. And keto would be a specialty item, I guess you would call it. You know, it's not a typical bread. Um, I'm just flattening out the top. I'm going to clean off my spatula because we all share the same spit in this house. Um, nobody cares if it's my fingers. Um... Yeah, it is a specialty item, so sometimes it's better to take special instructions. And after watching some of the videos, I was like, oh, damn. You know, that would have saved me a lot of money and time if I had to just watch the videos and taken some direction. You live and you learn. So, I do now. When I'm going to make something different, I always watch the video first just to make sure I'm not missing anything, you know. And, uh... All right, so that that is it for the bread. This is what it's looking like. I mean, it doesn't look perfect, but it's going to come out really nice. It comes out a dark yellow. Um, if you if you Google like best keto bread or something like that, you'll get a bunch of hits. They usually the first one is this dish that I'm making. I mean, there are so many different versions of it, but this is sort of the baseline, you know, the, the main one. And then you can kind of fool with it. Now, subbing out things like subbing out the flowers, all the flowers have different viscosities. They all, uh, you know, hold, 
hold water, hold moisture differently. So if you subbed out the almond flour for like coconut flour, I have no idea. It might come out of the oven and just be a puff of smoke. I don't know. Um, sometimes it's good to go into places like the Keto Evangelist Kitchen and just ask people, you know, if I make the bread, can I use this? A lot of people have already made those mistakes and you don't want to have to make them again with your expensive flowers. So ask the questions, you know, go in and ask the questions or Google it, you know, subs for almond flour. Um, same with the butter. If you don't use butter for whatever reason, I can't imagine why you wouldn't use butter, but if you don't and you wanted to say put uh, olive oil or coconut oil or some other kind of oil, uh, you'd need to find out if, if that was going to work. So um, do some research. So the macros for the keto bread, hold on, I've got them in my book. I always keep foods that I eat on the daily or that my husband eats on the daily in my book here so that I can always just flip back and look them up. So it's been a while since I had a keto bread though. Here's one. So if you have one piece and this is if you divide this loaf into 12, um, so 12 pieces from one loaf it's going to be 147 calories per piece, 13 fats per piece, 5.5 protein, and 1.5 carbs per piece. Um, which is good. For bread, shit. Uh, really good. And like I said, once you get it out uh, and flip it, you're going to want to give it time to rest. Don't try to cut it while it's hot. It's too moist, I guess you'd say. I know people hate that word. But just, look, you know, give it some time. Let it cool down. And put it on a rack because the bottom of it will accumulate moisture and get wet. So put it on a rack if you have a rack. And then once it's cooled down, put it on a piece of wax paper or... Um, you know, if you're keto, you should, you should have a thing of parchment paper. You can buy it just like this, pulls out sheet for sheet. Parchment, you're going to use that stuff a lot. Because uh, cheese, all that stuff doesn't stick to it. But put it on a piece of parchment and then cut it in half. Cut those two halves in half. And then cut those into three a piece. And that will give you 12. And so, um, and then just, you know have your macros for it and, and you're good to go. I We usually toast ours. You could eat them, I guess you would call it raw or just cooked, but um, we like them toasted. Um, and they're going to be fairly small. I mean, they're going to be probably a piece will be that big. It, they're like a, rec, or like a rectangle, I guess. So, um... Yeah, I'm not going to stick around and wait for the oven to heat up and then cook it. You are going to cook it for, like, you know, I put a toothpick in it at 30 minutes. And if it comes out clean, it's done. So, all right, y'all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again later. Bye.